Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul, and in this Rick Games Intercom video, we're going to be discussing Intel's Xenon Skylake scalable processor family, as well as TSMC in some alleged trade secrets which have been stolen. We'll go into that in just a second. However, just before that, I'm going to go into a quick PSA, public service announcement, and quickly discuss the performance of Prey. Um, both NVIDIA and AMD have drivers which are currently available, which improve the performance of the game. Although I have not done any testing currently on Prey, I do want to tell you from what I'm hearing, it is performing pretty admirably across a whole plethora of different chips. For example, if you've got something like a GTX 1070 or 1080, you're probably going to be absolutely fine for up to 4K. And something like, oh, I don't know, an RX 470 is probably going to be okay for 1440p. Maybe, you know, you might have to turn down the details a little bit if you really want to adhere to 60 FPS all the time. But certainly if you've got an RX 480, a 970, anything like that, you're going to be fine for 1440p. And obviously you can take down those settings a little bit if you require. So it's, it's looking like the game's optimized pretty well. The only slight caveat is that currently there is no FOV slider, which is a bit sucky, but there are workarounds for that, which is good. I'm not quite sure why an FOV slider was not uh, put on launch, but there you go. Anyway, we all know that Ryzen is currently available, and, well, it won't be long before Nepal's is launched from AMD, and this, of course, is to try to reduce the stranglehold that Intel have had on HPC server markets and so on. So does that mean Intel are just going to sit there twiddling their thumbs? No, of course not. They're going to release Xenon Platinum and other chips. And the Platinum has up to 28 cores, 56 threads, and is available in up to 8 socket plus configurations. That is kind of monstrous, right? Now, one of the reasons I find these videos very interesting, or this technology very interesting, is because it directly impacts us for customers for a number of different reasons. The first, and perhaps the most obvious, is because it represents one of the primary financial linchpins that the companies have. In other words, the sale of these processors, whether it's AMD, whether it's NVIDIA, whether it's Intel, whomever, know that they've got customers for life if they can win contracts from the likes of Dell, um, Google, whomever, because those companies will always need faster and faster processors or even just more of the same processors. In other words, that directly impacts us, whether we're gamers, whether we're, you know, 3D artists, whether we're programmers, whether we're sound engineers, because it essentially means that the companies that create cool stuff for them also create cool stuff for us, and they've got larger budgets to be able to invest. So in the case of Xenon, they are utilizing the new, uh, sorry, Skylake architecture. We'll go into that in just a second. So, first of all, getting away from the architecture side, I'm going to quickly go through a PR, well, a PR statement. It is very PR-y, so just, you know, be aware of that. It's meant to be a sales pitch. So, the Xenon uh, Scalable family is re-architected from the ground up and will be the successor to Xenon processor E5 and E7. Slight caveat, uh, slight, slight, sorry, slight note, this is Skylake replacing Broadwell and will incorporate unique features for compute, network, and storage workloads and impressive performance gains of 3.9 times higher scalability for virtualized workloads as compared to a four-year-old system, which is widely used in the market today. In other words, this is one of those situations where time is money. Not only if you are, let's say, running a large network of uh, servers, for example, let's say you're a web host, then you obviously want more work being able to run on a particular server because as websites become increasingly busy and as more you know visitors hit a website then obviously you need to be able to deal with that if your cloud computing whether your network whether your storage all of this stuff requires high levels of performance so intel are looking at scalability scalability is the way forward this is a direct response to nepal's which launch is pretty much imminent and whether it's going to be better than Nepal's in terms of raw performance, we're going to have to wait and see. As I said, Intel's Xenon Skylake SP is really focusing on scalability. The idea here is that Intel are introducing key components, uh, sorry, key technology components, which should, at least in theory, be rather disruptive to the industry. They have Intel OmniPath architecture, Quick Assist, Ethernet and Intel AVX 512 acceleration support. All of those technologies combined with Optane storage. Optane has been very well received in the industry. <clears throat> and 
not necessarily is going to be useful if you're playing something like Quake, but it is going to be interesting if you're doing data sum data center consumption, because this is often a case where huge amounts of data are being pulled in terms of I.O. at a single time. In the case of OmniPath Fabric, for example, which once again is Intel new technology, it will help to reduce bottlenecks, reduce power consumption, and in theory, reduce the overall wait time that data requires to travel around the system, which obviously is going to be very pertinent for time-sensitive tasks. Obviously, all of this requires a new platform, and that platform is known as Perly. There are a multitude of different pro um, socket configurations, 2, 4, 8, and 8+, eight plus, with a ridiculous amount of CPU configurations as well. We're looking at some processors which actually have larger number of cores, lower clock speeds, some which have fewer cores but much higher clock speeds, and quite frankly, I just could not read them all out to you because you'd A, be asleep by the time I finished, and B, I would probably die of dehydration and malnourishment. It would take an awful lot of time. Regardless, this is looking to be a very interesting process to launch, and will hit mid-2017. While I realise that this is probably something that's going to impact very few of you, it, once again, is very interesting for me, because, well, I look at the market as a whole. I look at whether uh, NVIDIA are looking at, let's say, self-driving cars, which obviously means they're pushing towards AI, which means, obviously, AI in, perhaps, games, because some of that research may be transferable. Power consumption, of course, is a concern, as well as size, so all of that stuff is going to be very interesting, uh, which will also perhaps translate to games and uh, laptops and whatever else. All of this stuff is connected, so for me, I kind of like looking at the, the wider ecosystem. Speaking of wider ecosystems... TSMC and the stealing of trade secrets. A former engineer of TSMC has been arrested in China. Now, I just want to point out that he has not, at least at the time I'm recording this, been actually um, charged with anything. <clears throat> but essentially what it is, is the Chinese manufacturers are looking to enter high-performance computing. And so what he's done... Um, the person in question, who is named as Sue, has been accused of stealing proprietary information and other materials relating to the Foundry's 28NM process. Not 14, no, 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 no. 28 we're going here, for my friends. And the goal would be to pass them on to China's Shanghai-based Hello uh, Microelectronics. I'm probably butchering that name. Where he has apparently accepted a job offer. Now, <clears throat> apparently HLMC had been aggressively there was, not mine, hide hunting for talent, and this is once again to kickstart the 28NM process. What's rather interesting about this, and why I find it quite uh, curious, first of all, 28NM, uh, so obviously there is still, because obviously 28NM is very well established, so the production of certain chips which are on the 28NM NM process is quite I wouldn't say, I'm not saying it's easy, but it's certainly a lot easier than, let's say, starting a new process and going for 14NM. But, TSMC is probably quite uh, synonymous with gaming at this point because, well, it produces the chips for NVIDIA and AMD. So if you're running, let's say, a GTX 1080 right now, well, you have something that TSMC have actually fabricated. So obviously, what type of design secrets this guy possibly has stolen is probably a bit concerning for many in the industry. And this stuff is, well, you know worth quite a lot of money, to be totally honest with you. So that is definitely something to take into consideration. I guess we're going to have to see. Um, hopefully he didn't do it. Hopefully he's innocent, because, you know, I'd much prefer that than him actually really doing it and then being found guilty, because, you know, I'd prefer someone to be innocent of the crime. But, hey, we're just going to have to wait and see. One final thing, we are finally on Patreon, because a lot of you have been messaging me regarding that. Uh, so definitely go check that out. And also, a number of you have messaged me uh, regarding some leaks on the uh, Vega architecture. There's a couple more benchmarks which apparently have popped up. But to be honest, I'm doing a bit more due diligence on those because I'm not quite sure because some people are saying that some of the leaks that have popped up at the moment are fake. Others are saying that they're not fake. And it's just a bit difficult right now. And obviously, at the end of the day, if it's a leak, it's really difficult to know what is actual, you know, you know, reality and what is, you know, not reality and what is non-factual at all. But with all of that said, uh, the Patreon 
link is in the video description so feel free to check it out if you so desire you know no no um no pressure if you want to kick us a dollar or something we'd greatly appreciate it if not do feel free to subscribe and if you've already subscribed then i thank you very much and do remember to like comment and if you are subscribed do you do myself a favor as well as yourself if you're interested in content and be sure to click that bell icon and make sure you get notifications because youtube and notifications not so much with the work here at the moment anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video i'll see you soon take care bye for now